Let us turn to Galatians chapter 6. Did you know we're all farmers? Did you know that? Some of you might say, no, 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 I'm not a farmer. No, we're all farmers. We also and we all reap. The question is, what do we sow? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived, go is not mock. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, and he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Here the Bible is telling us we are all farmers. We sow and we will reap. The question is what do we sow? If I sow rice. What am I going to reap? Am I going to reap brinjal? No. No. I'm going to reap rice. If I sow wheat, what am I going to reap? Wheat. Here the Bible speaking about sowing. What do we sow? He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So the big question tonight is what seed do we, what type of seed do we sow? Because whatever we sow, we start sowing when we're young. That's why some people say, Hey, I'm young, I can do as I please. The Bible says, wait a minute. Whatever you sow when you're young, you're going to reap when you're older. So just be careful. Don't to be too proud when you're young thinking you can do as you please. No, it's going to come back and haunt you. Let us turn to Psalm 34. Verse 13. You know the Bible says, "Out of the mouth, uh, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh." But here in Psalm 34, 13, keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Today we live in a world full of guile. So what does the Bible say? Keep your tongue from evil. You know, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. Let me repeat myself. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. Keep your tongue from evil. And thy lips 
from speaking guile. I was thinking a guile this afternoon. Guile always accompanies sin. Guile and sin go together. You don't steal in the broad in broad daylight in front of everyone. You do it when no one looks. You don't take a bribe in front of the cameras. You do it, you take a bribe when no one's looking. All that's called guile. Guile. Wherever there's evil. When you live in adultery. What do you do? You saunter behind the buildings. Building Prakanagani, like a thief, full of guile. Every word you speak, full of guile, lies. Oh, I wasn't there, I was visiting a friend or some I was at a cricket match or whatever. Guile. The Bible says, Bible and keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Look at this. The nation's full of guile. Can't talk straight. From the top to the bottom. Why? Hidden sin. That's the problem. Guile. And so, Kanuka. people marry and it, the marriage is full of guile. Wife is full of guile. Wife is full of guile. Wife is full of guile. Husband is full of guile. So what do you expect? Chaos. Chaos. Straight speaking comes from an honest heart. The Bible is clear. Keep thy tongue from evil, thy lips from speaking God. How many people lie in the court of law? As a witness, False witness. Drag some innocent fellow to court. Some trumped up charges because of your ego. And you say, oh, I'm going to teach him a lesson. Wait, wait, wait. God knows. He'll teach you a lesson. Guile. You can never run away from guile. Guile will come and haunt you. It's like sowing seed. The seed you sow, it takes some time to grow. But when it grows, Everyone deals with the consequence. So the big question is, what are we sowing? That's the biggest question in anyone's life. Today people live such irresponsible lives. Ah, I'm so smart, I'll get off scot-free, you think. But wait a minute. What you sow, that shall he also reap. If you cheat someone, there will be ten people waiting to cheat you. If you're a false witness, there will be ten people who will accuse you falsely. 
you rob from someone there'll be other people who rob from you what you sow that shall he also reap no one can run from the scripture let us turn to Genesis 37. Here's a family which had to deal with guile. The father's name was Jacob. He had lived most of his life deceiving others. You can go home and study your Bible. Learn about what's coming your way when you're full of guile. He had spent his life cheating till God touched him. Changed him from Jacob to Israel. But he who had been sowing seeds. Some of the seeds were kids. Children, brother. Part of the seeds children. You know, seeds can be actions. Actions. But here, he had a family. So, here, this was his seed. He had his boys and Joseph. And Joseph brought to his father's attention their evil report. Not false witness. Honest truth. And his brothers hated him for it. You know, when you tell the truth, people will hate you. That's standard fare that comes with telling the truth. People will hate you. But don't worry about that. God takes care of it. You always tell the truth. Otherwise, you be in trouble. Here we see Joseph told the truth. The brother sat upon him. Saw him in the field. The father had told Joseph, go see how the boys are. And then they saw Joseph coming. So they said, ah, let's get rid of Joseph. Look, full of guile. Ah, let's kill him. Then they thought about it, discussed it within themselves. It's better if we make some money out of him. So they sold him as a slave. Then what did they do? They took his coat, verse 31. And they took Joseph's coat, killed a kid of the goats, dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found now. No, now, whether it be thy son's coat or not. Verse 33. And the father looked at the coat. Yes, this is Joseph's coat. It is my son's coat. An evil beast had devoured him. Joseph is without 
wiped out rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put on sackcloth. Upon, upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. So here, Jacob, he had cheated others throughout his life. Now his seed grew up. And so they were playing the same game with dad. They took Joseph's coat, killed a goat, and fabricated a evidence which reflected Joseph being attacked by a wild animal. They were very smart. I mean, I'm saying that facetiously. They took the coat from Joseph Put blood on it. In other words, fabricated a story and took it to the father. Hey, is this your son Joseph's coat? Look at it. Look at it carefully. The old man took a look. Yes, it is Joseph's coat. But what's all this blood on it? He, he's been torn to pieces. Look at these young men. Deceiving their own father. How low can you get? Deceiving your own parents. I know that's a fine art with many people in Andhra. Right? Deceiving your parents. Oh, girls, you're very good at it. Oh, I know. Deceivers. What you sow, that you're going to reap. Deceiving your own parents? Why? You're hiding things. You're hiding your sin. He that hideth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh his sin shall have mercy, says God's word. So, the father was totally fooled. He said, my son is dead. And he mourned. Think about that. Do you ever put a father through that type of agony? Uh, old man. It tells you how wicked those brothers were ah. and how much they hated Joseph. He that hateth his brother is a murderer. So you might say, I'm a good fellow, I haven't killed anyone. No, 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 the Bible says, Bible he that hateth his brother is a murderer. Here the brothers had sold Joseph as a slave. Joseph went on to Egypt. He was a slave in Potiphar's house. But Joseph feared the Lord. Soon Potiphar saw 
Hey, I can really count on Joseph. He's a responsible young man. He assigned the whole household in the running of his household under Joseph. Remember yesterday's message? And so Joseph was in charge of Potiphar's house. With all the responsibility. You know, that's why our young people are so irresponsible. No fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I'm shocked. Because I get to train some of them. So I see what products come out of families today. What did I ask them? What did your parents teach you? Here we see what happens. Joseph was in Potiphar's house. But then Potiphar's wife set her eyes on Joseph. And tried to grab Joseph. Joseph ran away. She had grabbed his coat. So he left his coat behind and took off. Verse uh, chapter 39, verse 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Verse 13. Then she found she had Joseph's coat in her hand. So she trumped up a charge. So when the husband came back, Potiphar, in the evening, Hey, whose coat is this? Boy, she's doing exactly the same thing as the brothers did. Whose coat is this? Potiphar says, hey, that's the coat of Joseph. Yeah, he had tried to attack me. He left, left me with this and fled. Guile. False accusation. Why? She wanted to hide her wicked tracks. Didn't I say guile goes with sin? When you sin, you want to hide your tracks. But you can't hide your tracks. Because the Bible says your sin will find you out. You might say that or think you're very clever. You're as clever as a snake. You know, it's interesting. You watch a snake. Cunning thing. One time. It was Sunday after the service. We were eating lunch. Suddenly, we could hear some frantic cries of a little bird. It it wasn't natural squeals, it was, you know, frantic cries. So we said, hey, what is that? So everyone jumped up. We headed out. And sure enough, there was a snake. It had perched itself on a bush, on a shrub. And near a bird feeder, where there are seeds for birds to eat. And when this little bird came to feed, the snake got it. 
So what happened? We went after the snake. I got a shovel. And we chased the snake. The snake dropped the bird and took off for its life. Be sure your sin will find you out. When you get a clean heart and pure conscience and God speaks to you, you're transformed at the cross. God converts your heart, changes you. I'm not talking about cheap money conversion. Those are rogues and thieves. God transforms a life and enables us to live such that God can say, A man in whom there is no guide, a clean heart, and a pure conscience. That's what God wants to give each of us. When we humble ourselves, Confess our sin. Put things right. God will speak to you. And he'll transform your life. Your life will never be the same. And at the end of life, you like Joseph will be able to see the hand of God Guiding and leading in every turn. Let us pray. Father, we come to you Pray in our hearts. Lord, you know us all what's within. The filth. The garbage. The hidden sin. I'm loaded with guilt. And I need your help. I need you to transform my life. Fall at the cross. That's what Jesus died for. For each and every one of us. As we repent and turn from our evil way. God lifts us up transforms our lives and works a glorious plan to live for eternity and to glorify him. Lord, we thank you for your great plan for each one. We want to be those who sow good seed and reap the bumper crop. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. ఈ మా కార్యక్రమము మీకు ఆశీర్వాదకరముగా ఉన్నదని మేము నమ్ముచున్నాము మీ ప్రార్థన అవసరతల కొరకు మాకు రాయండి మా చిరునామా నిజదేవుడు